working this out in, in, the, in the body of Christ. And also, take it, you know, as a young person, finding out that I was to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, that I now am in to carry Jesus wherever I go. I was doing good carrying a six-pack of beer. So, I mean, this is, I need I need Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit in me. Paul said it really well in, in Romans. I don't do, I don't do what I want to do, and I do do what I'm not supposed to do. It sounds like a whole lot of doo-doo to me, but it's the truth. It took the words right out of my mouth. That was, that was my situation. You know, I don't want to do this, and I'm in the middle of it. And then, oh, I want to live like this. I'm sorry I said that. It screwed up. So there we go. Paul, Paul just took the words right out of my mouth. But I got to tell you, what the, the, the gist of everything I, I have been going he, with here is that we, not just me, we, we're, we're working our way home. We're going home. Jesus has, has come and put it into it. And kind of a practical application of that, I was raised in a plumbing shop. And, and my brother and I would be looking at instructions on how to install a faucet or work on a furnace. And my father would just um, come and say, get out of the way, I can do it while you're thinking about it. But, but see, Jesus came to model for us. He, he said, you haven't done well, but I love you. I haven't given up on you. And I want to show you how to get home. And that's the whole point of this. He's, he's, Jesus has stepped into our lives to show us the way home. He's called the way in scripture. And he's also equipping us how to get home. He hasn't left it up to any guesswork. And right now, this journey, it, it, for me, it fills me with such great hope and excitement. And, and uh, just the fact that Jesus has corrected what we're doing on this earth in the first place. For me personally, but I know it's, it's for people in general. He's given us a purpose this is what we're here for. This is what we were created for, to know why we were created, who created us, who loves us, and what we're to do while we're here. So in a sense, when we have accepted Jesus, we've already stepped into eternity. We don't have to wait. There was, I, I know there was a, a teaching that, well, when I die, then I'll, I'll meet Jesus. No, we can meet him here today. We can meet him here by the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. This all begins today. You know, when we accept Jesus Christ, it is happening. Okay, so what we're, we're on an, an equipping journey. And another part of this journey in, in, in the, the scripture that I really love is the book of Revelation. I spend a lot of time in there. Uh, don't understand a lot of it, but it is sure is great to, to work on it. So in, in Revelation, more information is given to us. Uh, the church... You know, Jesus addresses the church, and, and he gives us a model of how a church is, is supposed to function. We're, we're supposed to be, be a, a light. We're supposed to be standing out in a community, giving, giving uh, I, I don't want to say, heavenly kingdom values. We're, we're supposed to be modeling. We're, we're, we're supposed to be uh, ad, advancing the kingdom. Um, the church is supposed to be a moral situation, stand a moral institution uh, where people are growing and loving one another and loving the community and making a mark, making a change in that community. So the church, I, I just, again, the, the book of Revelation really points out God wins. God wins. And, you know, because we're part of his kingdom, we win too. He's, he's taking us with us on this winning journey. And, and we do it victoriously. Um, I wanted to, I was reminded that just a few weeks ago, Tim Johns was speaking about joy. He gave a message on joy. And I have to, to equate it to this, this message that in, in Revelation, that, that I am a winner. And I won. I've already won. And it doesn't matter the adversity that lies ahead. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the weather or, or whatever else. God wins. Satan is not victorious. He's, he's been defeated. 
And, and we, we, have to, we have to believe that. And we also have to believe that we're on the winning side. Um, that's, that's probably where I get my greatest joy, you know, when I listened to, uh, or when I saw Tim give that message. I was, I was saying, all right, Bob, where do you get your joy from? And I said, mm, eating a half gallon of ice cream, a nice car, good weather, maybe a hunting trip, maybe a camping trip. But I said, no, Jesus, Jesus. That's, that's where my joy comes from. Because he has equipped me, he's forgiven me, he's cleansed me, and he's taken me home. He's taking us all home. The book of Revelation also points out, and this is Revelation 19, gives us more information. It's so exciting that, that we're heirs and that we're a bride. We're a bride. We're coming into a family like we've never known before. We're coming into a bride. Remember that, that women, women are heirs only, only, only the, the male in a family receives the inheritance. Well, men and women are heirs. And then men have to realize they're brides. That's a, you have to be careful on going on that one this day and age, but men are brides, and here we go. So Revelation 19 says that we are, he's, he's given us work, we are to be weaving a fine linen, and that fine linen, and the book of Revelation is written in symbols and, 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 and word pictures. And this fine linen, we're, we're to be weaving for, for this wedding ceremony that we will be participating in, is the righteous acts of the saints. And that's, this is how we weave this. It's a very spiritual thing. We, with, with joy, peace, Kindness, goodness. This is how we're weaving this, this, this fine linen. We're weaving this robe to 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 uh, join this great wedding feast that we're all going to be in. And and there's a whole list of kindness, self control. That's that's what we're about. Being this bride. And and uh, Revelation 19. So. I can't even do those righteous acts again without the Holy Spirit. You know, we can, we can, that's the difference between religion and also in following Jesus. Religion is all about do. Uh, I guess I, you know, Paul said it again, all about that doing stuff. But, but we, we, with the help of the Holy Spirit, can live this righteous way, a, a new way, the, the, a transformed life. And I can't do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's, a, that's again, uh, I feel like a walking advertisement for the Holy Spirit. Yes, <laughs> get a new life, get a, be, get a higher thought, get baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I, I call this just... This, this is a journey home. Uh, a lot of times people will go through life without, you know, what's the purpose of this whole thing? And it's only, it's only by, by having Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in us that we find our, our purpose. And we all, have, we all have different abilities, different tasks. And that's why we need to come together as a body of Christ because we, we combine our tasks with your tasks, with your tasks, and, your, and, and we start advancing the kingdom of God. Jesus has already knocked, and we need to answer his call upon our, upon our hearts to find our true self. You know, we can, we can, in living in this culture, we can get pushed in opposite directions of what our true calling is. We can get pushed, but we need to find our true identities. I'm not saying that this road home is not without obstacles. There's going to be, there's going to be I want to say, opportunities to be stretched. There's going to be opportunities to deal with pain, and, and, but also so many opportunities to mature. I, you know, I, I, I looked at that for a long time, and I said, I don't want to use them. I don't want to say, there's going to be problems, because 
because problems are just opportunities to grow. And that's what I want to say. But I, I think having, having the overall understanding that, that we're on the winning team, that, that God has already defeated the enemy, he's given us authority and power, and in some situations we may have to stop and say, what would Jesus do in this situation? And, and how, okay, what's the, real, what's the real issue here? And then, and then we forge forward, but we check with the Father first. I know the terrain that we're, going to, we're on this journey goes through a fallen world, and we're going to have to deal with that. But, but Jesus has equipped us, or he's, he's given us the equipping. We need to put it into use. But we need to remember we are victorious in Christ. We are victorious. This, this whole thing is about heading home that, I, that I'm trying to bring up. I had to start, you know, we, we started with, with, with Genesis. And in that garden environment, it sounded wonderful being in a face-to-face -face relationship with, with, with them, with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Something we desire so much today, uh, living, living a, a guilt-free life. You know, no burdens, no scars, no trauma. That, that, that's the garden. And now we're heading, and I can't even imagine what it's going to be like, because I don't want to try to outthink God and imagine, because I'd just be throwing in ideas. We'd all be driving street rods, and, and it'd always be sunny, and there, there'd be a beach someplace, and there'd be lots of ice cream. But I say, see, I don't, I don't want to go there. I just want to say, I'm going home, and you can decorate it any way you want, but I want to be with you. Whew. So that's, that's my greatest joy. We win. We win. And we're headed home. We're headed home. That's about all I have to say. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time to share this. This, uh, this message has been on my heart. And, I, and I, I have been encouraged to know that we are headed home. We have a purpose here. Our job is not done. We have disciples to make. We have the seven mountains to, to reclaim. We're not here on vacation. We, and we have to press in to know you, to know you in a deeper, a deeper relationship, a deeper relationship. We need to work on our, our loving skills our forgiveness skills. We need to let go of judgments. So we have, we, have a, we have a lot to do on this side yet until the day you come. It may be 30 minutes and it may be a thousand years. We're not to know that. All we need to do is when you come back, I hope you find us excited and about your, your work. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let's take a let's take a trip to Guatemala. Hola. <laughs> I wanted to say, um, why go on a mission trip? We're on mission everywhere we go. Here in Laramie, we're on mission. God's given me my true identity and told me I am to help. Mark is a doer. I'm a doer. Uh, my favorite book in the Bible is James. Go and do. Um, Go and be proactive, love on people, help meet some of, the, of their needs, show them the Jesus in you, and introduce them to who Jesus is to you. There's so many ways to go on mission, so many ways. But 30 years ago, Mark got saved, and 
about, yeah, 31 years ago. And he said, okay, God, I'm all in. Just don't send me to Africa. <laughs> Seriously, that, that was his prayer. And so he, <laughs> about 20 years ago, it was sending us to Guatemala, or him, or Mexico first. Yes, Mexico, and then Guatemala. Um, it wasn't necessarily just to save the people there. It was to love on the people, to show the Jesus in me, to show them Jesus, but not to be blatantly saving the people and leaving. Um, it was changing my perspective. God took me there and changed my perspective of the kingdom. I see change here, too, when I'm in mission here. God changes my perspective, gives me the kingdom perspective. And that's what I seek out when I go on missions, is God's perspective. Wherever I am, here or in Guatemala, I want to see God's perspective in the people I meet. Um, he takes us there to do many things. We've done lots of different things. I've worked with women, uh, teaching them uh, a craft, <laughs> not surprise, um, so that they can learn to do something else to sell that's different, uh, to, to just loving on the people, to handing out thing, food and building houses and just, there's so many things we've done, um, but it's all to change me more than it is. I mean, it is to reach the other people, but it is really, I go to change me. I need those times when I need to be changed and keep my perspective fresh so that I can even serve here better. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next question you might have is, why Guatemala? And the bottom line in this case is God sets things up for us. And in about 22 years ago, our pastor, uh, Mike Coughlin, here in town, was in Mexico fishing. He wasn't down there for ministry. And he ran into this interesting fellow named Ron Hedrick. And Ron was a missionary in Mexico at that time. And, they, and he invited Mike to come down with the team. And... Uh, I don't know if I was on that first trip. I think I was. If I wasn't, I was on the second trip. And after that, we went almost every year for um, a while. But uh, Ron got relocated to Guatemala. And that's a bit of a story which I'd be happy to share, but I don't want to take the time right now. But um, I'll give you the really short version. His church in Missouri had built a church and planted one in Guatemala 20 years previously. And so they reached out to his church in Missouri and said, uh, help, you know, we've grown, our family has grown, our church has grown, we could really use some help. And so he went and investigated and found the needs to be real and ended up actually moving to Guatemala in about 2008 or 2009. So after that, much to my relief, our missions trips went to Guatemala instead of Mexico. And the reason that's a relief is that they're in the highlands about the same elevation as here, and it's not so blasted hot. <laughs> okay, I've been here so long, anything above 70 degrees feels kind of warm. So, uh, just for fun, that is not snow blowing off the top of the mountain, that is smoke, because it's a volcano and it's erupting. And I don't know if I've been on a trip where there wasn't at least one volcano erupting. All right, let me see if... What? The, the down one? Thank you, sir. Okay, just probably everyone here knows this, but Guatemala is sandwiched between Mexico on the north and Honduras and El Salvador on the south, and it's just west of Belize. Um, and, uh, well, I'm going to get there. So here's a blown up version. There's Guatemala City. That's really the only place you can reasonably fly into. Um, our friends, Ron and Rhonda, whom we've now known for like 21 years, and I, I think this will be, gosh, I don't know how many trips, uh, 
they live right here on this side of Lake Atitlan. Um, and you see that's a volcano, that's a volcano, that's a volcano. And <laughs> yeah, they're all over the place. Uh, generally not causing trouble, but they're kind of interesting. It is a gorgeous area. So, um, yeah, we'll keep going. Let's see what we got. So this is their website. I do highly recommend anyone who's interested to go to the GCO Missions website, check it out. They've actually made huge upgrades in the last year or so. Global Community Outreach, yes. GCO. GCOmissions.org. Um, if it's not in the handout or the weekly email, I'll make sure it's in the weekly email so you can just click on it. But they have greatly improved it so that you can get a better idea of what they're about. They are uh, definitely operating by faith. They don't have any massive fundraising uh, in place. They just make their needs known and God meets their needs. So, and there they are. And it took me about 15 shots for them to actually pose seriously instead of being goofy. Um, really fun folks. Uh, Jeremiah is their son, and he is helping with the mission now. He's about 24, I think. 20, is he really? Wow. Okay, time flies. Um, oh, there we go. Wow, this is not super great as far as visibility goes, but their home is um, on the side of an airfield. Apparently in the 70s, they thought this, somebody thought this would be cool, and they built this whole community around this airfield. And... It didn't ever really go. So they were able to get this home very, very inexpensively, but literally this is the airstrip. And there, there is some remote probability that we'll be able to actually fly in there, but don't count on it. We'll probably drive in from Guatemala City. Um, this is some old, some old and newer pictures. That is Dan. Uh, he went, all of my sons have gone on these trips before they graduated high school. This is the most recent one where Tim and I ended up digging a ditch. Um, <laughs> we ended up doing all sorts of things, and that's why I brought some pictures, so we can kind of scoot through there. Uh, one of those things is, is uh, providing stoves. They're made locally in Guatemala. To get away from this setup, uh, what's generally referred to as a three-stone fire, where you have three stones and you set your pot on top of it, responsible for a lot of injuries in Guatemala and a lot of smoke damage to the women. This is a pl one of their um, O'Neill. O'Neill's the brand name, but it's a, a stove made out of concrete and lava uh, pumice, and it's, it, the smoke actually goes outside instead of accumulating inside the house. Um, this was another one, and... Uh, we did a foot washing and we gave shoes to the entire church community in this one town. Um, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Yeah. Okay, so the guy kneeling is Mike Hafner, who used to be here at this church years ago. Um, and so he's been on one. He was at Eve Free at that time when we were doing mission trips. So actually we have a lot of connection with Mike. Mike and our son Dan kind of got us over to Rock Laramie. <laughs> so it was kind of cool that they all, we had gone on a trip with them. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to throw in this photo for those of you who've been around long enough to know Mike. Oh, there we go. So we ended up doing a variety of things. I'm gonna show a lot of building stuff, but we've distributed food, we've put on a, like a party in the park for kids and then distributed food and, and maybe shown the Jesus film. There's just a whole variety of things. This we're doing some rehabilitation on, a ch on that church I was mentioned that actually got run down there in the first place in Elatenango. Um, and of course it wouldn't be a missions trip if you did not hand mix some concrete at some point. That's, I think I've only been on one trip where we didn't and we ended up digging a ditch instead, okay. So uh, this is, um, I don't know if we can get these anymore. This was a prefab steel house. We built two of them on one trip. That was, that was neat, but I don't think that we can afford to buy those anymore. They're just too pricey. Uh, and this is us dedicating the home to the two moms that are going to move in there. I think they were both single moms. But that has been a few years. This, this was an ad hoc project at the end of a trip. 
uh, we met this gentleman, Ernesto, and he and his family were living in this um, makeshift shelter. He was sharecropping. Uh, and there's his son out playing. Um, <clears throat> so this was like two days before we were going to leave. We found out about this. And we pooled our remaining money, and we got crazy, and we did that in 24 hours. Now, Ernesto was out there who knows how early in the morning, because when we showed up, the whole area was leveled, and the only tool he had to work with was a big hoe. I mean, they used these. Oh, yeah, it's right there. You're right, right there. Anyway, there he is with a couple of his kids. I think he had four at the time. Um, so you never know what God's going to set up for you to do. We don't know now because everything Ron and Rhonda do is through community and connections locally with pastors and people they know. So closer to December, when we know how big our team is, how much money we have, and how long we'll be staying, we'll get into, he'll, we'll share that information and Ron and Rhonda will come back with, here's some things we can do given your circumstances. And then we, we will choose. But again, sometimes God will throw something in there last minute and you get to do that. This is us doing, making kites with the kids and distributing food at one of the more traditional villages up in the mountains. When Ron and Rhonda start something like food distri distributions centers and stuff like that, they make it so that the people, local people carry it on. So that it isn't just white people coming in and doing something and leaving. They live within the community. They live within the culture. They go to church, their traditional churches. They, uh, she just did worship at their church and she dressed in their, uh, in their customs, custom clothing, and she gave worship. She, they've had worship times in their own home, um, kind of opening up their style of worship to them, but they're very much and very conscientious about the culture and the people. They also do pastor training sessions uh, that can last days at their at their home. Uh, I, I don't know how big a crew they've had there. Maybe twenty pastors coming from all over the country. Let's see what else did I find? Oh, so for a while they were actually running an orphanage out of their home. Uh, Guatemala changed the rules about that and about having people from that were not Guatemalan running orphanages. So they had to basically send the children to other orphanages, and that was heartbreaking. Uh, but it, it was fun while it lasted. Um, Liz and I went down and spent some time with them. Yeah, that was a Christmas visit. Oh, I keep pointing this the wrong way. Okay, this is my quick who, what, when, why, and where. Um, so... I already mentioned we'll work out the details of what we'll be doing later on. We're proposing that we leave on December 28th and come back on January 5th, but I would love to add another day in there if we could. Either leave a day earlier or come back a day later. Dare not come back later than January 6th because if we're taking any younger people, which I think we will be, they need time to recover before school starts on the Monday after that. So this year, AC, uh, our local school district doesn't start back until the 8th. So that being said, we are not just limiting it to adults. We're living, it's kids on up. But we do ask that parents go with their kids. <laughs> yeah, parents need to go with them. If they're, my, if they're under 18, we ask that a parent be with them. Um, just because if something healthy, you know, you have to go to the whatever it's just a good boundary and uh, there's chances like if somebody gets sick stomach things do happen they can stay back at the base with their parent and the team can go on and do whatever um that has happened mark has gone on and been sick that's a whole nother story but <laughs> anyway i have hundreds of pictures from all of these trips and I can answer questions. Liz and I can speak with anyone who has questions. Um, right now the cost for a 
an eight day visit, which is what I originally proposed, is about 750 for your room board and supporting the ministry. That does not include airfare, which right now is painful. I am looking, trying to figure that out. If I'm hoping they drop, but I haven't seen anything drop yet. Guatemala City is like 1,100 right now. Dead serious, yeah. The, uh, probably 2,000 at the moment. Um, there is one alternate uh, flight that's 850, but it goes through Mexico City, and it, it's a 19-hour layover, so I'm not sure that's a good use of our time. That being said, that is just getting you there, staying and feeding you. That is not the supplies for the project. So whatever supplies, we will have a fund to do a uh, house or shoes or feed or whatever so that we can fundraise for that as well as individuals fundraising for them to go. And if anybody is interested, obviously contact Mark or I. We do have a list going. People are interested. That doesn't mean you have it. <sighs> we can take a big list right now and it'll narrow down as time goes because some things change in people's lives. They can't make it, they can't do the, fu they don't get the funding, whatever. We will start with a big list and go down to a smaller. And I don't remember how many he can take. Well, you can easily do 12, but Ron, uh, you can rent anything down there. So he can rent a bus if he needs to. So a big team can be fun. We've done that before where we actually split into two sub teams. One, uh, one team went and worked at a Christian school and helped do some repairs there and another team worked on a house and they got the fun of digging a septic system by hand 12 feet 12 feet down six feet in diameter it was amazing we had some younger folks on that trip yeah. college students <laughs> yeah so and one of them had done like archaeological digs or something so she knew how to do this stuff it was awesome um i uh, there's something else and it just flew out of my brain so just, it, does anyone have a question now they want to throw out that would be beneficial? No? I just put out for every airline, I don't care. And I didn't come up with anything better. There's this possibility, remote, a remote possibility. Ron knows a guy who's a pilot. <laughs> who owns, no, this gets better, he owns a twin engine plane that is pressurized, so it flies at like 20,000 feet. Given the prices right now, we could hand this guy like $10,000 and it would still be cheaper for us if he came into Laramie, picked us all up and flew us to Guatemala. Yeah. Now, that would be fun, but that is a remote possibility at the moment, so I'll look into that. <laughs> Even if we do that, I do not want to land next to his house, okay, I'm just saying. I've seen planes come in there. Yeah. No, we'll just go to the ship. I don't want to limit it just to Laramie, though. This is for anybody that's watching, too. Um, I know people in, a, in KC have um, expressed interest to come, too. So we will make it happen however, and we will get people there however. It, it just is that we need to start with people who are interested. And by the end of this month, I'm not sure of the date yet. We are building a deck, so we're going to have a barbecue for anybody interested, and we'll go over more things with the people interested. So, Sounds like I better get home and get work on, on the deck. Yeah. Well, we don't really have a plan in place for fundraising yet, but yes. Actually, that reminds me of the thing that flew out of my head. So thank you very much, Deb. For those who aren't going, of course, helping with fundraising would be great or donating funds. But what I really want is people dedicated to pray individually. So like you pick your team member or team members that you're going to pray for the entire time they're gone. It is super powerful to have someone praying for you back home when you're in the mission field. So... I'll take as many people as want to pray for me. Thank you. <laughs> but they can also be, if you're interested in helping with fundraising and stuff, they could also come to some of our meetings and hear about Guatemala too. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, thank you very much. Yeah, Liz is on it here. You want me to or you to? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pray for this because we're, we're going one way or another. Um, unless God says no, the donkey will have to speak to me or something. You know. So, Lord Jesus, we do thank you for this opportunity to do good works that you have prepared in advance for us to do. We thank you for Ron and Rhonda and Jeremiah. We pray that you would bless them and their ministry. And we ask, Lord, that you would guide us in this. Your Holy Spirit would guide us every step of the way on how to be your hands and feet and bring your love and your light to Guatemala. And Lord, we pray for your spirit to touch the heart of our team. Help stir in them the desire to, to step out in faith and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, and then to actually make it vocal, let us know, and, let, um, and really take that big step of faith for some of people that have never done this or people that have done this and need a new perspective, Lord. Help us to form our, your team. Thank you, Lord. Amen.